when it comes to Métis jigging and Métis fiddling, you'll see lots of influences from uh, Scottish Orkney dancing, but of course you'll also see French dancing that it gets influenced in even Irish dancing. Métis fiddle music is a very major part in uh, Métis culture. They would use their feet and they would stomp their feet along while they're playing and we call it clogging. So they'd clog their feet along while they're playing and uh, to create kind of this horse gallop sound while they're playing. One aspect of it that I find though that sometimes gets missed though is the influence from the First Nations powwow and their traditional dancing. Uh, so our dancing, you know, very unique, has a lot more, you know, cultural influences, but we've absolutely made it into our own dances and that's why you'll see songs like, you know, the Red River Jig. The Métis Sash, often referred as in Southern Michif, Ceinture Fleche, is a multi-tool belt uh, also referred sometimes as utilitarian. It was a multi-use tool that we would use during the fur trade. Uh, often uh, fur trader men would wear the Métis sash, but they were 100% finger woven by Métis women. Uh, when you saw a full-size sash compared to the ones that uh, are made today on loom, they were double the width and double the length of uh, those sashes. Uh, they would often wear them around their waist. It would serve as, you know, a kidney belt uh, when they were carrying very large packages. You could use it as a tump line where they would tie it around their head and then they would have a package uh, down on their back that it would be tied around also. And then also too, it would almost be like a carpenter's belt or like a worker's belt where you could carry very much of your items, you know, if you had a hatchet on you or tobacco, um, some flint to start a fire um, and various other tools you could carry um, with this sash. Uh, it was really wonderful. It was very strong. You had a lot of colors in it too. Um, one thing that was really highly noted was that if your horse per se was stuck in mud, you could actually tie it around your horse and help it pull out of the mud. You could also um, tie it around your horse as a horse blanket and thus in that case you could put your saddle on top and it would be like a, as it put it there, a makeshift horse blanket for your horse. Uh, that's how long they were during those times and how durable they were. The colors on it can be quite um, unique from community to community. There are often uh, color teachings that might be affiliated with some communities. Um, I, I do have teachings that uh, I was raised when it comes to the sash, um, but I think just it's important to note that certain communities and certain parts uh, where Métis people live, they might have specific colors that are, they are affiliated with and also teachings that come behind it. A uh, good example of that one is if you see the Manitoba style sash or the dark time sash that has the black on the side, that black actually represents the dark times that the Métis people faced during the Red River resistance and the Northwest resistance. The Métis flag uh, is very interesting history around this flag. It's the what we call the Métis infinity flag. So you'll sometimes see it in red, you'll see it in blue, uh, but the most important part it has is that it has this infinity symbol right in the middle. The infinity symbol on that flag was the most important part of it because it represented two nations coming together. Uh, you had the folks that were from Europe that were creating a new nation with um, the First Nations here in the Northwest, thus creating the Métis Nation. And of course, with that infinity symbol, it means that it will go on and on forever. And today, we consider it the uh, national flag for the Métis people and the Métis Nation.